As a beginner, we always make mistakes while writing a code, which further leads to the compile time error. But what if I tell you that there is a way to manage this error before even executing your code? Well, in today's video, we are exactly going to do that in JavaScript programming setup. So this video, we are going to dive into often ignored yet important concept of exception handling in JavaScript. But before we begin, I would like to request you guys to enable both the subscribe button and the bell icon for Intellipath YouTube channel so that you won't miss out on any update coming from our team. First of all, let's have a look at the agenda we have for this particular session. We'll begin this session by understanding what exactly an exception is. Then we will get ourselves introduced to exception handling. Later, we will discuss where and how you can use exception handling. Along with that, we will also discuss the four components of error handling and we will also see some example related to that. Before moving towards exception handling, it is very important to understand what exception is. So, what is exception? Exception are a normal part of software coding and development. An exception is an event which occurs during the execution of a program that disrupts the normal flow of the program instruction. In other words, it is something that happens that was not expected or encountered for in the code. For instance, if you are writing a program and you make a call to a function that is not defined in your program, an exception will be thrown. This is often the result of small error we make here and there, like typos, forget including a header file, or forget initializing a variable. Besides that, we can also get this exception when the assigned memory space to compiler is kinda exhausted. So let's move towards our VS code to get a better idea for that. If we create a function that calls itself, it is called a recursive function. So let's try to create a recursive function. Uh, let's give it a function a name as a fun one. What I'm doing right now is I'm calling a fun one inside it. So this is called a recursive function like this. In order to run this function, we have to call it. So let's call the function fun one like this. Point to note here is while creating a recursive function, it is important to give it a proper termination. Without termination, it will keep revoking itself until the maximum call stack size is reached. To resolve this kind of error, proper exception handling is very important. As you can see in this example, there is no proper termination to this code and it throws an exception. So let's understand what exception handling is. Exception handling allows us to develop reliable software applications by trapping and handling errors, displaying sensible error message to users, and even performing cleanup operation before exiting the program. Exception handling promotes stability, reliability, and user experience of our application. Let's consider one more real-life scenario where exception handling can come to rescue. Imagine you are building an e-commerce website that calculates the total price of a customer shopping cart. The customer adds various items to their cart, but suddenly, due to an internal server error or network issue, the price calculation fails. Without exception handling, the entire checkout process could break, leaving the customer frustrated and potentially abandoning their purchase. However, with the proper exception handling, we can cause such error displaying a friendly error message and provide an alternate solution or a way to retry the calculation. Let's see how to handle this kind of exception occurring while programming. We have four main components of exception handling. That is, try, catch, finally, and throw. The try catch statement is used to handle error that may occur during runtime by allowing the programmer to catch the error and respond to it. The try catch statements work by allowing the programmer to write all the code which may generate an error inside the try block. This code is then tested and if it does not create any error, the catch block is not executed, making this a form of exception prevention. However, if any error does occur in the try block, the catch block catches the error and executed any code inside of it. Now let's try the error occurred in the previous code where we misspelled the name of variable. Let's move to our VS code. Here you can see I have declared the variable named result 
and I have consoled it inside the drive lock. As I know, it might throw an error. Moving on. In this case, it throws an error. The catch block will catch it. When there is a problem with the code, an exception object is made. It carries the information about the issue like type and it calls. For example, in this case, we misspell the name of variable and the console return the reference error. Result is not defined. So here, reference error is a type of error and result is not defined is actually the part what is creating a problem. The catch block will hold the type of error and the actual error in the form of object. We can later use this error object to showcase what kind of error occurred inside our program. Here you can see that I have given a name error as an error object. You can use any name over here. The main point to keep in mind about this is that it will only work in case of asynchronous code. It won't work for the synchronous code. Let me show you how it behaves in case of synchronous code or what we call the scheduled code. As you can see, the hello is not defined and it is mentioned inside the try block. The error will occur and the try block will throw the error to the catch block and catch block will execute. However, if we look at our console, the catch block is not been executed. Let's try to understand what is happening over here. We have put the set timeout function inside the try block, which will delay all the processes happening inside it for the specified time. Since the process is usually execute in milliseconds at the time of execution, the process was delayed and it didn't catch any error inside it. As a result, the catch block never got to execute. To fix this, all we have to do is create a try catch block inside the set timeout function. The way, even if the code inside the set timeout get delayed, our try catch block will always be executed. Let's try to code it. As you can see, the hello is not defined and it is mentioned inside the try block. The error will occur and the try block will throw the error to the catch block and catch block will execute. However, if we look at our console, the catch block is not been executed. Let's try to understand what is happening over here. We have put the set timeout function inside the try block, which will delay all the processes happening inside it for the specified time. Since the process is usually execute in milliseconds at the time of execution, the process was delayed and it didn't catch any error inside it. As a result, the catch block never got to execute. To fix this, all we have to do is create a try catch block inside the set timeout function. The way, even if the code inside the set timeout get delayed, our try catch block will always be executed. Let's try to code it. So, what we have done here is we have declared try and catch block inside the set timeout function. If we try to run this, our catch block will execute even in the synchronous code. Moving on, what if you want your code to execute regardless of whether there is an error or not? In that case, we use finally block. We usually place finally block right after try and catch block. Let's try to understand it with two cases. Case 1, where there is no error in the code. In this example, we have just used the print statement to get an idea about how the process of execution works. Let's try to run this code. Here, there is no error, so it will first execute the try block and it will execute the finally block then. Case 2, where we have an error in our code. To understand the behavior of finally block, let's have a look at a VS code. In this example, the compiler will first try to execute try block. However, it will encounter an error because we have tried to print something that is not declared. This error will be then passed to the catch block and catch block will execute and then at the end finally will be executed. Let's try to run this code. We mainly put the important code inside the finally block because we want it to execute no matter what. We also use finally to clean up and manage our code. Additionally, it helps us to avoid our program from crashing. Wouldn't it be great if you could create your own error? No worries. Exception handling also provides you with that feature where you can create your own custom errors. In programming, we can create custom errors using through statement. 
This statement is typically used to provide programmers with the information about what is happening within the code. By employing the throw block, developers can gain a better understanding of any issue or error that may arise during the execution. Let's see how throw works with the help of simple example. Here in this code, we have just used a simple example of try, catch and throw. Here in this code, we are only checking whether the given input is a number or not. If it is, the else statement will be executed and if it is not, if statement is executed and the corresponding error will be thrown. We can use the throw statement anywhere and however we like inside the try block and whatever is returned inside the throw statement will be passed as an error object to the catch block. In this example, I have used throw with an if else statement. Whichever condition is satisfied, the throw statement will be executed and the corresponding error object will be passed. That concludes our overview of JavaScript exception handling. We have reviewed its significance, a practical issue where it can be applied, and its four essential elements, try, catch, finally, and throw. With this information, you will be prepared to manage issues and guarantee that your JavaScript code runs without a hitch. Keep checking back for our new videos. To stay up to speed with the most recent programming tutorials, don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel. Happy coding and thanks for watching. Just a quick info guys, IntelliPath offers full stack web developer course in collaboration with ENICT Academy IIT Guwahati. Through this course, you can learn everything from front end web development to back end web development from esteemed IIT Guwahati faculties and industry experts. With this course, we have already helped thousands of professionals in successful career transition. You can check out the testimonials on our Achievers channel, whose link is given in the description below. Without a doubt, this course can set your career to new heights. So visit the course page link given below in the description and take a first step towards career growth in the field of web development.